both, both know both of the women that are presenting today. So it's an honor for me to be able to introduce them. Um, so Gray is a part of our Start of Life program, and that's one of the programs that I help manage. Um, and so I've gotten to see Gray since she came in here, since before she was part of our program, and see her business blossom, her business design blossom, and see her take on new clients with new strides. So please welcome Gray. <laughs> I'm 
speaking as a millennial, because I'm a millennial, and most people who go into new businesses now or going into corporate settings, they're also millennials. So these statistics are based on people in that millennial age bracket. Sorry to everyone else that I missed. My bad. <laughs> so it takes eight seconds to grab a person's attention. We usually are on our phone strolling, looking at something, or we just um, read over something really quick, and then we're like, oh, OK, whatever. And we may go back to it. So you have to do something, no matter what it is, that catches people's attention in about eight seconds. The next thing is 69% of millennials live in FOMO, which is fear of, um, I forgot, fear of missing out. <laughs> believes that in-person events can make or break their business. So now that means one third of CMOs, CEOs, and whoever else is starting to put more money into event planning and event marketing. So that's good news for me, of course. Then the next thing is 78% of millennials are willing to spend money on experiences and events, which means the more events you have, the more people will be willing to come out. It's not just, hey, I want to sit home, I don't want to do anything. It's not people actually want to get out and experience life. So that's my job to create that. And like I say, I'm all about community. So I've worked with companies such as Augusta Candle Company by hosting a few Christmas parties there. Um, I've also worked with Augusta Food Tour since the beginning, since they opened, making sure that that company and that brand um, gets to show every aspect of Augusta in the greatest way that they can. Toast of Augusta, since they open, giving them theme nights and helping them create different things that they can do throughout the years for their customer experience. Um, the Lincoln Chamber of Commerce, I did their opening back gala and also I did a summer series where we used their front porch of their chamber building as a concert series. So we hosted different concerts with small local artists in Lincoln Center and I helped put that together for them. The Black Chamber of Commerce, I sit on the board as a VP member at large, and I also helped with their game last year, and this year they gave me full on reign to take it over and do it, and it's gonna be June 8th, and I'm super excited. And Pop Up Augusta, where we host pop ups in different places in Augusta, I decided to work with them last year, so also I could um, show the beauty of Augusta, so everyone can see what it is, and we can show people different things that they didn't know was in the area. So that's what I mean when I say community engagement. So these large corporate events that come in and that want to do things, there's nothing wrong with that. But I also feel like they should come into the city and get to know the people who are in the city because that's the most important thing. You can't just come into Augusta and say, hey, yeah, I want to put this big building here, but I'm going to provide 200 jobs. Yeah, that's great. We need that. Thank you. But at the end of the day, get to know the people who you work with within your community. Partner with these small businesses. With the Gusto Canada Company, there's so many different things that a, a um, company can do. They can do a relaxation night and go make candles, and they have candles named after their company, and that way it's a partnership for both things. So that's just a little idea, and once again, I am Mr. Gray Wood, <laughs> the CEO of Plan with Gray, and now, does anyone have any questions? So the biggest week in uh, 
the Gust area for sure is next week. What do you? What kind of events do you have going on next week? So next week I will be working with Garden City Jazz and um, being the volunteer coordinator for Party on Green. I did that last year, and then I also will be working with Pop Up for their um, Pop Up that they have. But I can't tell you guys what it is, although I know. <laughs> but for their Pop Up that they'll be having next week. Yes. So. Um, I heard you said that you do big events, but do you ever do smaller events for, you know, smaller groups? Yes, ma'am. That's how I got started. I didn't always do, like, I didn't dive in to the deep side. I literally stayed in the three feet for a long time. So I've done small events, private parties, just done a lot of things like that. You got cards? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I do. I have one question. How do you keep track of customers? So I have an online database um, that when you send me an email, um, their email automatically gets saved. And now what I'm going to start implementing is um, newsletters. So I'm going to send out different things of what I'm doing throughout each month because I do have events coming up that I do or that I host or that I put together so people can see the different things I do. Um, but as of right now, at the beginning, you know, just catching up technology because that's not my field. <laughs> but um, at the beginning, I really was like handwriting everybody's email down and be like, okay, I need to reach out to this person or I need to get their address and send them a thank you card for, you know, they did an event with me or they expressed some form of interest, so. I guess one question is, how many of those people are you getting to come back and redo events with you? And how much money are you spending to bring new people in? Um, so a lot of my events, I do not, I do not have a retainer at all. Um, except for the businesses that you saw listed on there, they do come back. Um, but as far as like people with actual events, like if I do someone's wedding or if I do um, a small birthday party or something like that, they're, they're not coming back unless they have something again where they're like, okay, yeah, I used Granny before, I can use her again, or hey, Granny, you know, a consultation or something like that. Um, but as far as money goes to get clients, I mean, if gas, lunch, and <laughs> a couple of drinks count, then I'm not spending that much. I'm not going out like, hey, I have to do all this to get people, at least not yet. All right, to finish up the round of questions, um, the one that we try to answer every time with each speaker is, what do you need from us? How can we help you? So what I need up with, of course, is more corporate clients because now I'm a corporate event planner. But the most important thing is each and every one in this room probably has some connection to somebody in the community. So for me, it's definitely community um, engagement. So we swap contacts and we sit down and we get to know each other. And I need your contacts, you get my contacts, and that's how that happens. Very cool. Thank you.